Hello and welcome to this Union Solidarity International weekly update. My name is Walton Pantland and with me is Lindsay Millen. Yeah, this week we're covering the rising wave of strike action across the world, um, homophobia in the Ukraine, the Tory party conference and tech company tax avoidance in the UK. Now, the reason we have a financial crisis is because the rich have been creaming off all the profit for a generation, leaving working people with no spending power. Wages have stagnated since the 70s, despite increasing productivity. This leads to a drop in demand because people can't afford to buy things. To make up for the drop in demand, more and more credit is extended, so people can keep buying enough to keep the economy ticking over. Credit fueled an unsustainable housing boom that collapsed, taking the banks that funded it down with it. Now we're being asked to pay for this crisis a second time over through austerity. To make matters worse, the UN Food and Agricultural Organization has warned of rising food costs. This is partly due to speculation on the financial markets, with financiers speculating on wheat futures and uh, other commodities, but also due to the terrible season we've had across the world uh, due to bad weather, which is most likely a result of climate change. All of this creates an absolute perfect storm where food prices rise across the world, people have less money because of austerity, and as a result, we're seeing a wave of strike action and resistance to austerity. So I thought we'd go over just some of that activity and a, a bit of a recap of what's happening this week. Now, firstly, Walmart, the US supermarket giant, is experiencing its first strike action in its 50-year history. Uh, workers at both retail and distribution sites across the U.S. have walked out. They're protesting the low wages that Walmart pays, which means that many people who work for Walmart are dependent on various government subsidies in order to keep them going. The United Food and Commercial Workers Union has tried for many years to organize Walmart. However, the company's anti-union tactics and deep pockets has meant that they've not been successful. This time, the union is working with community groups and campaign organizations like uh, Warehouse Workers United and our Walmart to protest against the, the company and it's receiving a lot of media attention and a lot of support. There's also an ongoing dispute at Palermo's Pizza in Wisconsin and we had a very interesting web discussion yesterday with one of the organizers from Palermo's. Strike. It's a really important struggle and um, it's probably the biggest labor struggle happening in uh, the state of Wisconsin right now, which as you know has, has seen a lot of uh, labor strife over the past couple of years. Um, our governor is world famous for, for trying to uh, take away workers' rights. Um, that was an attack on public employees <clears throat> who are governed by state law. Um, there's been a lot of fights in the private sector as well, um, which is by federal labor law, um, including the strike at Palermo's Pizza. Um, we're now in our fourth month of the strike at uh, Palermo's Pizza. Uh, now, we've all seen the footage from the streets of Athens from following Angela Merkel's recent visit. The Greek unions have just announced a second general strike will take place on the 18th of October. That's the second one this month, uh, which just shows the growth of anti-austerity protest in Greece and uh, indeed across the world. Um, unrest in South Africa continues. There are as many as 100,000 workers in South Africa currently taking wildcat strike action. Most of them are in the mining sector. The gold mines Anglo Gold Ashanti and Goldfields currently have 48,000 workers on strike. And uh, this week the workers rejected the company's final offer. So, huge amount of unrest there. There's also ongoing action in the transport sector, and municipal workers are threatening strike action. The government seems paralyzed and unable to resolve the dispute. Uh, earlier this week, we had a discussion with Tahir Seema of the South African Municipal Workers Union who gave us some insight and background into the labour dispute so we'd encourage you to watch that as well and get some deeper understanding of what's happening. Some good news, last week we reported about Algerian trade union activist Yassin Zaid. He has now been freed after a widely publicised campaign so for everybody who supported that campaign, thank you. And also one of the members of Pussy Riot, Yekaterina Samutsevic, has been freed, though two other members remain in prison. Several months ago, we reported that Moscow had banned gay pride for a century. And Lindsay, you have a terrible story from the Ukraine, don't you? Yes, um, the Ukrainian parliament could give final approval next week to a bill that aims to outlaw pro-homosexual propaganda, 
which could be any, any positive depiction of gay people, gay pride marches, or even screening the film at Brokeback Mountain. Um, this archaic legislation imposes indeterminate fines and up to five years in prison for repeat offenders. In some ways, Ukraine is an open and tolerant society. It was the first former Soviet Republic to decriminalise homosexuality in 1991 and has its own gay rights movement. But um, with wide, the wide support for this bill indicates that there's a very different attitude in a large part of the population. The first reading of the bill last week unleashed a deluge of condemnation from human rights organisations both inside and outside Ukraine who have christened it a gay gag law and say it would be a gross violation of European and international conventions. And I think it's no coincidence that a number of gay activists have been attacked in recent months. Uh, the first ever gay pride march planned in Kiev was called off at the last minute in May after threats of violence from far-right groups and immediately after a news conference announcing that decision, um, masked attackers kicked and jumped on Svatislav Sheremet, head of the Gay Forum of Ukraine, and there are some shocking images of this attack uh, circulating online. The new bill could even be interpreted as to outlaw any public display of same single-sex affection, um, such as kissing and hand-holding, which in this day and age is a huge backward step. Mm -hmm. And uh, to further depress us, this past week has seen the Conservative Party conference in the UK and uh, I've tried to stay away from it because it's very it's horrible to watch but uh, I've been shocked at quite how right-wing a lot of these people are and the absolutely ridiculous things which which they come out with there's been uh, terrible attacks on um, on abortion rights from Jeremy Hunt mm -hmm. who's the health secretary uh, there's been just a string of really really reactionary stuff coming out of that conference which is really terrible and uh, Bad for trade unionists, one of the, the, the most important being the attack on trade union facility time in the civil service. Uh, Francis Maud has said that trade union facility time will be taken away because he doesn't want taxpayers funding union activity. So very important attack on trade unions, which of course they will resist. Um, you don't like Tories much either, do you, Lindsay? No, I mean, what they don't tell you about trade union activism in the public sector as well as the private sector is that it saves the employers a lot of money by avoiding lengthy disputes mm -hmm. and clearing things up, you know, by negotiation. So it just shows you how short-sighted the Tories are. And I was, you know, delighted to see David Cameron in a typical display um, of trotting out the wife at the end of the the conference for the obligatory photo call yeah. and I wondered if Margaret Thatcher did the same with Dennis and Hardy. I don't really <laughs> don't think so. And uh, our favourite tech companies, Lindsay, how are they doing? Yes, there are more bad apples in the interwebs basket. Uh, you may have seen the headlines about the minimal amounts of UK tax paid by Facebook, but the social networking giant ain't the only ones avoiding tax. Um, Amazon, the UK's most popular shopping site, generated 3.2 million in UK profits last year, yet managed to pay zero corporation tax, as its European headquarters are registered in the tax haven of Luxembourg. That's 0% tax. Amazon is also well known for its questionable employment practices. Google made 2.53 billion in the UK last year and paid just 6 million in corporation tax. That is 0.2% tax. Figures for 2010 show that Apple, the biggest company in the world, paid 10 million in tax on 1.3 billion UK revenue. That's 0.7% tax. And ePay paid 3.4 million on 180 million UK revenue. That is 1.9% tax. So I wish someone would sign me up to these low rates. Interesting that none of the methods used by these companies for avoiding corporation tax are illegal. The HMRC have said so long as these companies are paying the full amount of tax and the revenues in the country that they are based, they are doing nothing wrong. But surely questions have to be raised as to whether or not they should be paying their fair share of tax in the countries that generate their profits, particularly at a time of austerity and cutbacks. And particularly since their business relies on infrastructure which is funded by tax. Once again, thank you for watching this Union Solidarity International. 